Hi everybody, this is your Venture One teacher, Alex. Today is April 9, 2020. In this video, instead of continuing where we left off, which was Unit 6, Lesson C, Exercise 2B, Unit 6, Lesson C, Exercise 2B, uh, page 74 of your Venture student book, on page 74, right here. I hope you can see this. Instead of doing that, I will be teaching about prepositions of time in lesson C again. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that the students have a complete understanding of this topic. And this topic is difficult. So, in a way, I'm reviewing again. So let's begin. We learned that words at, on, in, and from to are prepositions that are used to talk about time. And time can be expressed in many ways, such as clock time, a day or date, part of a day, month, or year. So with that in mind, um, with that in mind, we're going to look at this prepositions of time chart that I created here. And to look how each preposition is used differently. So, preposition here at is used for specific time, specific time, and parts of the day. Examples for specific time, 9 o'clock, 2.30 p.m. With at, you say at 9 o'clock, at 2.30 p.m. Examples for parts of the day are night, noon, midday, midnight. So with at, you say at night, at noon, at midday, at midnight. For on, on is used for days and dates. Examples for uh, days are Thursday, my birthday, Christmas day, weekend. When we use on, we say on Thursday, on my birthday, on Christmas day, on the weekend. Here, we have to say on the weekend. For dates, simple. Let's use today's date, April 9th. Another way of saying this is 9th of April. 9th of April. So we say on April 9th or on 9th of April. So on is used for days and dates. One thing I want to mention is that here we have a Christmas day. I hope you don't get confused using on for Christmas. So here, Christmas day and Christmas, they're, they're different. Christmas day is one, one day. But Christmas is more than one. Because we have a Christmas day and Christmas Eve. So here, if we want to talk about Christmas day, I mean, we're Christmas, like one part of the Christmas. So we say on Christmas day, not on Christmas. Okay. For a proposition in, in covers things like 
parts of the day, month, seasons, years, periods of time. Examples for parts of the day is morning, afternoon, evening. So we say in the morning, here you have to say the, in the afternoon, in the evening. Month, very simple, April. So we say in April. Seasons, seasons. I hope everyone know, uh, knows what seasons are. Seasons are spring, summer, fall, and winter. So right now, uh, we're in spring. So we say in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, and in the winter. That's how you say it. Uh, for years, very easy, 2000, right now is 2020, year 2020. So we say in 2020. Periods of time, we have past, present, and future. Past, present, and future. So within, we say in the past, in the present, in the future. Finally, we have from, to. From, to is used uh, to uh, describe thing, uh, something when, uh, describe the time when something starts and ends. So when something starts and ends. Examples are from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. From 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Another example, from Tuesday to Thursday. From Tuesday to Thursday. So, um, so uh, those are some of the details um, or the differences between uh, each preposition, at, on, in, from, to. But um, there's another way of seeing this chart. And another way is that uh, the time gets longer from at to in. At to in. So, so the time gets longer from at to in. Can you see it? So can you see it? Uh, here, at, as I said before, is used for a specific time. Specific time. So, and on is used for days and dates. Is it, is specific time bigger than a day? No. A day is bigger than specific time. And in, the word in, is used for uh, such as month, seasons, years, and periods of time. Which means that it, had, uh, it contains many days. So this is one day, and this is multiple days. If it is, uh, so here we can say, so if we look at this, from at to in, the time does increase. It gets longer. So it gets longer from compared to here, to here, to here. But you might ask me, uh, teacher, for the proposition um, at and in, they are used to describe parts of the day. Aren't they the same thing? So here, uh, let's uh, let's do an example. Here we're gonna choose for at we're gonna choose a night, and for in we're gonna choose the uh, evening for the parts of the day. So proposition for describing parts of the day, we have night and evening. However, even though they are describing the parts of the day, um, the words are different. So the night and evening, they're not the same thing. So night is from sunset 
to midnight. So sunset is when the sun goes down. Evening, oh, evening is from sunset to sunrise. So when the sun goes down and the sun goes up. So if we compare the word night and evening, sunset to sunrise is a lot longer than night, which is from only sunset to midnight. So in this case, um, we're even though we're talking about parts of the day, we're describing parts of the day. There are two uh, day. Uh, they're different. So this is shorter amount of time than the evening. And so the rule where I explain the time increases from at to in, this is correct because the parts of the day for evening is at in and night is at at. So I hope that uh, uh, this way of thinking um, helps you have a better understanding of preposition of time. Now, using the propositions that we learned, we can use when to ask about the time something happens. In another word, we will use when and proposition of time to ask a question and answer the question. So we had two examples for the question and an answer. So for the question here, number one, when do you go to work? When do you go to work? The answer, I go to work at 8 o'clock. I go to work at 8 o'clock. Now number two, when does he have class? When does he have class? He has class on Monday. He has class on Monday. So you're able to form a question and answer um, using when and proposition of time. But we need to check um, or we need to know the four rules, the four rules right here to make sure that we are um, forming the question and answer in a correct way. So the first, number the, for the four rules, uh, first, we need to check the pronouns. The pronouns are uh, something that we learned in previous lessons. Uh, so pronouns we know, I, you, he, she, it, we, they. So those are some examples. So we need to um, make sure that the, the, both the question and the answer have a matching pronouns. Number two, if the pronouns contain he, she, or it, you have to add an S, I mean, a S to a verb. We have to add S to a verb. For he, she, or it. Now, when we add an uh, S to the verb, it only works with a statement. So when we ask a question, so any question that has he, she, or it, uh, the verb doesn't uh, doesn't require S to be uh, added to the verb. So we don't need to add an S to a verb when asking questions. But for the answer you do, for the statement. Number three, uh, number three, we use, we use do or does um, to make a question 
in simple present tense. And you gotta remember that does is only for pronouns he, she, or it. So we need to make sure uh, the pronouns matches with the do or does. So for does, so for pronouns he, she, or it, we need to, when asking question, we need to have does. Now finally, we need to check the prepositions of time. Prepositions of time. Remember, prepositions of time um, can be used differently uh, for specific time, uh, days, dates, month, seasons. They have different rules. So now, now um, with the four rules, uh, we will go over the question and the answer. Now, here, in the four rules, so number one, we're going to check the pronouns. So pronouns. So here, oh, so the pronouns for number one, when do you go to work? Pronoun. Pronoun. You. And the answer, I go to work at eight o'clock. I. So here, the pronouns match with the question and answer. When do you go to work? I go to work at eight o'clock, right? Now, the second one, we need to, so since um, the question and the answer doesn't have the pronoun he or she, the verb doesn't need to have an S uh, for the statement. So here, this, ver this is the verb for question, and this is a verb for the statement or the answer. So it doesn't need an S. So it's like, I just say, I go to work at eight o'clock. And then number three, also, uh, since the pronoun is not a he, she, or it, we have to use do to uh, ask a question. So when do you go to work? And finally, uh, let's check the proposition of time. Here, is, it says 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock is a very specific time. So that means the proposition that we're going to use for the time is at. Okay. So one more time. When do you go to work? I go to work at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. So, let's go over number 2. When does he have class? Here, same thing. We're going to, uh, oh, and the answer is he has class on Monday. Now, we're going to check for pronouns one more time. So, pronoun, here the question is he. And the answer is also he. So, the pronouns match for the question and the answer. Second part is since the pronouns is a he, we need to check that there is a S on the verb. Let's see. Here. So for the question, for the question, this is the verb. It doesn't need to have an S because it's a question. But for the statement, it has to have an S. So it's has. So when does he have class? He has class on Monday. The third rule, do or does, this pronoun once again is a he. So it needs to have, or well, we need to use does for the question. Does. When does he have class? Finally, uh, check the proposition of time for a statement. So he has class. It's Monday, day. Anything to do with day or dates, it's, we need to use preposition on. So we have on. 
When does he have class? He has class on Monday. So now um, we will go over exercise 2A, 2B, to, and 2C on page 74 um, to 75 on the Venture Student Book.